Hey there, beloved of God and of me, of course. Welcome to this video. Once more, this is part three of the series that I start with the question, what is truth and what is lie? The meaning, the true meaning of truth and lie. And then I'm going to continue with based on these principles that I'm going through right now, I'm going to build with the Word of God and especially in uh, conjunction with our mindset. How do we look at God and how do we look at God's Word? In what, what mindset is necessary also? Okay, let's continue with uh, the previous slide, the, the last slide of the previous video rather. And that was this one. So again, it's very important to understand the meaning of integrity because it talks about a whole. All, always an integer is a whole number. Integrity talks about one piece made out of one piece. So we know now that uh, integrity is like a congruent ship between heart and decision, as an example. Heart and outcome. So it's possible that people want to make decisions uh, that reflect who they want to be rather than who they truly are in that sense. If that's the case, they do not love themselves. We know that already. After all, there is a difference between who they want to be and who they are. There's a difference. That's already unhealthy. If who you want to be is different than who you are, that means that you are not loving yourself or not loving yourself enough. So remember that and ponder on it. In that case, such a decision lacks integrity, you see? The decision is fraction or broken, not the same material as the heart. So if, if again, as uh, the same example as last video, if your heart is diamond and your decision is wood, that, that means that in your heart you want to be wood. That's the point. Because you are not satisfied with who you are, diamond. That's the point. So think on it. Ponder on it. Very important. It's first, first and foremost uh, uh, of foundational importance that you are accepting you, yourself uh, how, as how you are, as go, how God made you. That's the point. That's the point. Otherwise, you will not be happy. So, uh, such a decision is broken and not integer or it lacks integrity. So reason, and this is the one I want to go to, could be that they are, people like that, are under great pressure. Or should we say great tribulation. The point is that, that it is pressure, that's the right surroundings, to bring to the surface every decision that is broken. It comes to the surface immediately. So let's say you have a certain faith because your parents had the same faith. So this is not faith that your heart is in it. This is not faith because you stand for it. No, you have a faith because your parents had the same faith and you grew up in that environment. As an example. And it's very well known. So... If that's the case, and the pressure begins to mount in order to defend, to be able to defend your faith, what will you do? I can guarantee you that if your faith is not based, it's not one whole with your heart, you will abandon your faith immediately, very fast. Some will take longer, but then again they will abandon their faith. Because their heart was not in it to begin with. That is the whole point. 
you see so people like that are standing in the lie not in the truth only people whose heart is in the decision or whose decision is totally um uh, a a what is the word um uh, a, a, a total logical outcome of the heart those people are made out of one piece and those people will uh, prove themselves to be worthy and i'm talking relatively now according to the evangel of israel in the great tribulation of course those people will prove themselves to be worthy and righteous because their heart is in their faith do you see the point that is what it means and those people are standing in truth just in terms of the principle that i'm trying to bring forward here so this is what will massively happen in the end times because of the mounting pressure one after the other will fall away one after the other because their faith was never uh, based on their heart on who they really are what what they really stand for that is the whole point and even if you were a bible teacher a christian bible teacher or or uh, w whatever L let's say bible teacher because that's the best example in this case even if you were a Bible teacher, but you were a Bible teacher in your heart, you only know that because your father was a Bible teacher or um, you, were, you grew up in that environment, but your heart is not holy in that, but maybe you get honor from other people because you are a Bible teacher. In that case, you are broken. You are broken. You are fraction. And you will break in the great tribulation. You will. Easy. You will. Pressure mounts and you will not be able to uphold it. You will break. You will fall away and you will take the mark of the beast. That's what will happen. Okay. So that's why this is a very important principle. Humanly speaking, of course. So people will denounce their long-term faith. Well, how long it is, I don't care. If the faith is not built on who you are and your heart, it will break because it's not true faith. That's the whole point. So they denounce, they will denounce their long-term faith for short-term privileges because they were not in it with their true heart. That's the point. That's what it's about. Okay, let's continue. Often their heart will not be into their faith or into their decision so they will betray themselves in the first place but they will also betray others but the moment you betray another you betray yourself first always the moment if you're angry at another you're angry at yourself first always that's how it works that's why everything begins with yourself relatively of course so again they will betray themselves or they will betray their own heart it's the same thing only the chosen ones out of israel in the tribulation will be given by god the only one who can give them that the stamina to persevere until the bitter bitter end so it's only the chosen ones not the called ones because many are called remember matthew 24 14 many are the called yet few are the chosen that means god called many people in the end times that's what he will do because the end times didn't start yet so God will call many in the end times. And first of all, it will seem like a great revival. Great, um, what is the word? Yeah, revival is the only word I can come up with. And you will see, wow, these are the latter rains that church is talking about. And also in Acts. And also in the prophets. So 
you will you will think this this is the one this is the great revival but later on as the pressure is mounting all of a sudden you will see that one after the other is falling away betraying one another because they betray themselves first they betray their own faith or their, their heart their consciousness sorry their conscience and that's why they will betray others also their neighbors their family the, even their parents or their children they will betray uh, each other that's what will happen and only a few well a relative few of course are the chosen ones and only the chosen ones will remain until the bitter end because they are chosen that means they are being given the stamina by god of course to persevere until the end so a small recap so integrity means whole made out of one piece that means truth standing in the truth this is the true meaning of truth fraction is broken and of course that's the lie standing in the lie and a lot of people a lot of people i would say most people in the world are standing in the lie and that's how they live they live a lie that's very sad but it's true so let's take a look at some simple examples simple examples of lying to oneself the first one someone commit commits a crime discovers then that they are filmed while doing it and then try to erase their tracks by capturing that film or even killing the filmmaker remember well I, I would say can you um, recognize this the, the question is why do they do that what, what is the case the, the thing is that they are trying to escape ownership of that crime they escape ownership and they do not take responsibility for what they have done that's the point if you are a leader and you commit a crime what is possible of course then you take ownership for it you have done it it's your fault it's your error and you take responsibility for it and you accept accountability for it also with everything that 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 entails so these people who do not who try to escape ownership they are victim mentality people they are going for the easy fix in the short term there you have it again the law of leverage you go for the easy fix in the short term but later you will lose much more including your own happiness and peace of mind of course and that's the pain of regret if you do not acknowledge what you have done as an example of course but taking ownership if you become a leader will bring that pain of discipline in the short term yes that's true but it will bring an acknowledgement that you've been so wrong and that is leadership and that is standing in the truth that is standing in the truth because you recognize your conscious uh, your conscience sorry and you are uh, acknowledging your conscience and your heart of course so in the short term it will hurt it's the pain of discipline it will hurt but in the long term that's the only way to great liberation great liberation great freedom true freedom bringing peace of mind and happiness that is the freedom it will bring so think about that second example okay let's say a harms b knowing that a is at fault here so a knows that they are at fault here and then a third person c is looking intently at a and a gets very angry at c 
recognize that? <laughs> oh yes, we all have been there, I think. We all have been there. The question is why? What is, what's going on? First of all, anger is always aimed at oneself in the first place, and I already mentioned it, I know. Anger starts with yourself, with myself. It always starts with self in the first place. In this case, A is extra confronted with themselves because of the intent look of C. That look functions as an extra mirror to A. So why does A get very angry? Uh, at C because C is holding a mirror before their face so they now have to look at themselves so A has to look at themselves you see the point and that makes A angry and A is then projecting that anger at oneself they project that anger to C or they project it at C but in reality, they are angry at themselves. Yes, I think this is clear. Hopefully it's clear. So it functions, the intent look functions as a mirror, of course. As long as A doesn't truly look in the mirror, they will not go through the pain of discipline, learning and growing. They will not. Again, it always begins with the solution. Always begins with taking ownership, being a leader, becoming a leader. That's the point. That's where it begins. And again, it will hurt in the short term, but it will be very beneficial to us in the long term. <clears throat> okay, so... Another, re uh, um, another remark, I'm going to mention it later again, but this is exactly what will happen at the Great White Throne. So people will be held a mirror of themselves. They will, they will be forced, so to speak, to take a good, good look at themselves. That's what will happen at the Great White Throne. Can you imagine what kind of anger will be a bursting out there before the Great White Throne? Can you imagine what kind of screams will sound at the Great White Throne when people will have, no, they will have to look at themselves, see themselves, how they are wow that will hurt yes but again in the long term that will be for their own benefit that's the point it will work as an embalmment so to speak in the long term same law again always functional so i think i will stop here this video and then I will continue the, in the next the, with uh, a third example, a simple example. That's the third and the last one. But then I will go through a bigger example. So thank you very much for having watched this one. And hope to see you at the next one. See you. Bye bye.